Hey everyone, welcome back. In this video, I'll take a look at the four best gaming platforms you can install on a Raspberry Pi. But before we get started, let's go over the hardware that I'll use for each one, just to give you an idea of what all it takes to actually put something like this together. First off, obviously, you need a Raspberry Pi. In terms of performance, the newer Pi 4 would be best, but they're also the most expensive, and at the moment, some of the emulator software isn't quite caught up with them yet, so I'll be basing all of these on the Pi 3 B+. Really, for retro gaming, the performance difference won't matter that much unless you're trying to emulate a PlayStation or something. Along with the Pi itself, you'll also need the usual peripherals. This includes a micro SD card. It doesn't have to be too big, but obviously the more games you store, the more space you'll need. I would recommend an eight gigabyte card. You could probably get away with a four gigabyte card for most of these. And obviously anything bigger than that is just gonna be more space for more games. Oh, and if your laptop doesn't have a micro SD port, you may need one of these micro to standard SD card adapters. A lot of micro SD cards even come with these so you might already have one laying around. I happen to have tons of them. And you might want to get a case. It's not a requirement, but if anything metal comes in contact with the circuit board while power is supplied, you can short it out and damage the board, and it's just a good idea. You'll also need a micro USB power supply. These little adapters are easy to find and any standard micro USB power supply should work. That covers the usual Raspberry Pi stuff, but for a gaming system, you'll also need some kind of controller. Most USB keyboards or gamepads will work. I'll be using this old Logitech controller. If you're using a Pi Zero, you may also need one of these micro USB to standard USB adapters, but otherwise most USB controllers should just work as is. Then finally, you'll need a screen of some kind. For mine, I'll be using this Ymaxit touchscreen, and these things are nice because they're lightweight, 1920 by 1080 resolution. They've got this screen cover so you can just toss the whole thing into your laptop case. The cover also doubles as a stand, which is really useful. I'll go ahead and put a link in the description so you know where to find these. They do support touch through USB, which works on Raspbian OS. It won't really be useful for gaming since most games aren't designed with touch, but it is pretty cool that you can basically turn your Raspberry Pi into a tablet. Really, any monitor or TV or projector that supports HDMI should work. I've never had any problems getting any HDMI devices to work with the Raspberry Pi. So with the hardware out of the way, let's get started. Gaming platform number one, RetroPie. This is definitely the most popular option for the Raspberry Pi, and it's the one I've been using for years now. You can get it from retropie.org.uk. I'll put a link in the description, and then you just write it to your SD card using something like Etcher. This process will be pretty much the same for every one of these gaming platforms. Once RetroPie boots up, it'll ask you to configure your controller. This is pretty easy. Just press the buttons they ask you to press and you're good to go. So this is the main menu and as you add more ROMs to your library, the different gaming systems will appear here as options, so you can click on them and then select the ROM that you want to play. As far as the number of systems it supports, the list is pretty long. Basically everything from Atari to PlayStation 2. And this will be true for most of the platforms I show in this video, since they all use open source emulators to play the games. And there are a lot of good open source emulators out there. So many in fact that some systems have two or three emulator options. So if your ROM doesn't play properly in one of them, there's a good chance it'll work in another. Adding games to RetroPie is pretty easy. If you connect it to your network using Wi-Fi or Ethernet, it'll show up as a shared folder that you can copy your games into. If you don't want to connect it to your network, a USB drive will work too. All you need to do is create a folder named RetroPie on it, plug it into the Pi itself, and it'll set everything up for you. Then if you plug the USB drive into your laptop again, it'll have a folder named ROMs, which will have a bunch of subfolders for each gaming system. Then you can just copy your ROMs into the right gaming system folders, and when you plug the USB drive back into the Pi, your games will appear. Here I've copied Castlevania into the NES folder, and you can see that it's an option I can click on and start playing right away. Other than that, there are lots of different 
themes you can pick for RetroPie, so you can style it lots of different ways. They do require an internet connection because it has to download them, but it's pretty easy to do. There's also a bunch of plugins that can add all kinds of apps and functionality. My favorite one is the Kodi plugin, which installs the Kodi Media Center. That way you can play games and stream your movies and shows and YouTube all from the same device. That's the setup I use for my home media center right now. So yeah, that's RetroPie. Gaming platform number two, Recallbox. This is another popular retro gaming platform that works really well on Raspberry Pi. And it's built on top of Emulation Station, just like RetroPie, so they're similar in some ways. Installing it is the same as RetroPie. You need to download the image from recallbox.com and then write it to an SD card. I've tested Recallbox before, but it's been a long time, so I'm interested to see where this project has gone. Right away, you get the controller configuration, just like RetroPie, and then you're good to go. I love the user interface on this one. Everything feels smooth, it's got kind of a retro look to it, and I like that it shows you the specs of the different gaming systems. If you open the start menu, there's an option to go to Kodi Media Center right there, and yep, it comes pre-installed. So that's really cool. You can watch all of your movies from there, and then play all of your games from the main system. The settings are all nicely laid out, um, really similar to RetroPie, but maybe even a little bit nicer. Unfortunately, I couldn't find a way to load games from USB after a few searches online. It seems like it's pretty easy to do from the network, but for some reason not from USB. I don't really feel like setting the network up just to test it here, but luckily it comes pre-installed with a bunch of games for different systems, so I'll give one of those a try. I like the game info that it gives on the side there. That's a nice little transition effect too. And you see, this game was published in 2013, so it's not a classic NES game, but there's a surprisingly good number of modern indie games being developed for these older systems. All in all, I like this one a lot. So that's Recallbox. Gaming platform number three, Laka. This is another popular gaming platform for Raspberry Pi, and I think it's probably the most unique in terms of user interface, at least out of the first three. You download it from laka.tv, and it has this nice little walkthrough to help you get the right image. Then you write it to an SD card, just like the others. Laka has a very sleek user interface, and it should look really familiar to anyone who's ever played a PlayStation before because it's very similar. There was no controller configuration, it just worked, so that's pretty cool. The menu system is really easy to navigate and really intuitive. It also lets you customize a lot of different things without having to download different theme packages or anything. For instance, you can change the background color. I don't like that it jumps back to the top of the menu every time you change something, but you probably won't do that very often, so it shouldn't be too bad. I did try a different background effect, the snow option, and it practically froze the entire thing up to the point of being unusable. So that's unfortunate, but it does warn you about that possibility. I guess just keep in mind that some of the options may be intended for more powerful machines than a Raspberry Pi. In terms of adding ROMs to the system, you can do that over the network, but it was also really easy to plug in that USB stick that I configured for RetroPie earlier, navigate the folders to find the ROM, and then scan the directory to add it to the game library, and it started a blank screen. Not sure what's up with that. Then I button mashed a bit and the menu came back. I pressed play again and it just worked. Hmm. The game plays nicely and it looks like the hotkey in the middle of my controller will bring up the menu, so that's pretty cool. Not sure what that initial glitch was, but considering how easy it was to load the ROM from USB and start playing, I'm not too put off by that. And apparently with Netplay, you can essentially stream a multiplayer game to another machine so that uh, two player games can be played on two different machines. I've never tested this, but it sounds really cool if it works properly. I also like that the games have some stats here in the menu, like playtime. And yeah, that's Laka. Gaming platform number four, Steam Link. 
So this one isn't technically a gaming platform, but instead it's a way to stream your Steam games through your Raspberry Pi. This way you can play your Steam games on a more portable platform without having to move your gaming computer around. But it is your gaming computer that actually runs the game, they're just streaming through the Raspberry Pi. To set this up, you'll need to download Raspbian. You can do this from the raspberrypi.org site, and I get the normal desktop version without the recommended software, just because because it's a smaller download and I don't need all of the software. You don't want to get the light version because it's intended for command line use only. And once you download that, you write it to your SD card just like the rest. This one does take longer to download and write because even though we avoided the extra software, it's still the biggest file size by quite a bit. Then you boot it up. You can see that the YMAXIT touchscreen works just fine. Otherwise, you can also use a mouse. You'll also need a keyboard for this because you need to type sudo apt update and then that will update all of your software sources. Then type sudo apt install Steam Link. This will install the Steam Link package. All of this, by the way, requires an internet connection, but that shouldn't be too surprising since we need the network to stream the Steam games anyway. Once that's done, you can open up Steam Link from the games menu and you're ready to get started. I forgot to have Steam running on my main machine, so I did that and then rescanned and it was able to find it on my network right away. When you click on a machine to connect, it'll give you a pin which you have to enter on that machine to allow it to connect. After you do that, it tests the connection and everything is good to go. The controller seems to work right away, so that's good. But it looks like Steam Link is confused by my dual monitor setup on Ubuntu. So I went and unplugged that second monitor and clicked on the game Factorio from my main computer to see if it'll play. Everything looks good, but touch doesn't work and neither does the remote mouse keyboard. So something isn't quite right. I tried a different game and the controller doesn't work, but the mouse and keyboard does. No idea what's up with that. So then I tried another game and the controller worked just fine. Unfortunately, I'm terrible at playing first person games with a controller, but it does work. So yeah, that's Steam Link on Raspberry Pi. Those are the four best Raspberry Pi gaming platforms I could find. If you have any suggestions for alternatives or any theories as to what I was doing wrong with Steam Link, let me know in the comments. I think my favorite of all of them is Recallbox, just because I like the UI so much and the fact that it has Kodi built in. In fact, I'll probably be using that as my main entertainment center from now on. Well, that's it for this video. Let me know what you think in the comments and I'll see you next time.